Namaste and welcome back to the series on reduction mammoplasty. In the previous videos, we have already seen what are the standard markings and measurements in cases of breast reduction. What do we mean by the use of different pedicles and on what vascularity they are based? What is the meaning of the different types of breast reductions? And usually what are the most commonly used techniques? Now we will further go in detail to the WISE pattern and the inferior pedicle technique along with which it is combined and it is still one of the most commonly used techniques in the world because it is reproducible, consistent, easily taught and it is used for a wide variety of breasts of different shapes and it also gives consistent results. But the problems that we have faced with the Weiss pattern is that because of the inverted T-shaped scar there are problems of healing at the T-junction and in case of inferior pedicle technique, the breast tends to bottom out over a period of time. That is due to gravity when the inferior pedicle descends, the pendulous breast shape is lost and it tends to give a more boxy appearance. Also, we cannot use the inferior pedicle technique in cases where the nipple areolar complex is very far away from the inframammary fold because that would mean that the pedicle with which we are basing it on becomes extremely long and therefore it can hamper the vascularity. So now with the patient in the standing or the sitting position and the surgeon being comfortably at the level for breast marking, imagine that this is the chest wall and the breast of the patient. So we will use different markers for the landmarks. So with the blue marker, I'm going to first highlight what we have to note in general. So it gets confusing along the way when you're not used to seeing these surgeries day in and day out. So how do we remember the easy ways to remember the markings? So the first thing that you should do is mark what is standard and mark what is obvious. So first we are going to mark the midline of the patient. So a measuring tape is used for the patients or over a period of time you can also do it freehand. So from the ziphy sternum the marking is done down to the ziphy sternum it is done from the sternal notch. So this is the midline of the chest wall of the patient. Then we have to mark the breast meridians. So the important point to remember is that the breast meridians start somewhere from the mid clavicular point and they go along the breast. Now it is not necessary that the nipple areolar complex in the breast will correspond to the breast meridian. It could have shifted towards lateral or medial side depending on how heavy the patient's breast is and how they have developed over a period of time. But the markings that we do have to be such that once we reposition the breast, the nipple areolar complex should correspond to the breast meridian. Now to make sure that the breast meridians are corresponding to each other, you should also note the distance between these two from the midline. So you should note three standard places where they should at least be equidistant. So that once you move the breast up, you're sure that you are doing it in the correct orientation. Okay. Now once you have marked the breast meridians, you have to mark the inframammary fold. So if the inframammary fold or the IMF is somewhere around this region, you will mark it on both the sides. Now in the breast, it is difficult to keep imagining again where the inframammary fold is as the breast is lying over it. So a good way of remembering it is that you just join the level of these two inframammary folds on the chest wall. So place another marking over here so that even when the breasts are in their position, you have a landmark as to where the inframammary folds are. 
so this is what is going to be the standard markings before you start marking the pedicle and the patterns now once you have your standard landmarks fixed the idea of the breast reduction is obviously reducing the size of the breast and you are repositioning it to its normal position so normally the nipple areola complex is just above the level of the inframammary fold so our first aim is to reposition this that's why in the case of wise pattern what we will do is first identify the point of the imf and usually around 1 to 2 cm just above that will be the highest point at which the wise marking will start because this will be the level of the upper border of the nipple areola complex so remember this will be the highest point of the areola complex so from this level now what you have to do is that we need to draw the limbs of the wise pattern so the limbs of the wise pattern are drawn on both the sides from the highest point so this triangle shape or this dome shape is into which the nipple areola complex will ultimately fit once you lift the breast so how do you decide the angle of th these two limbs this angle is usually kept around 70 to 80 degrees and how do you decide the length of these two limbs so usually the distance we know that from the sternal notch to the upper border of the nipple areola complex in a normal breast is somewhere around 21 cm 19 to 21 cm similarly we know that once we will reduce the breast the length of the limbs that we need are going to be somewhere around 7 to 9 cm so this has been standardized according to the different uh, statures and chest widths of the patient so usually around 7 to 9 cm is what these limb lengths have been standardized at now these limb lengths from here you have to join both of them to the inframammary fold so with a lazy s shaped incision these two are going to be joined to each other this is on top of the breast what happens to these two limbs once you lift the breast up that is these two limbs are going to join at the level of the inframammary fold in a transverse lazy incision because once these two limbs are elevated they have to be joined and stitched to each other so usually once this transverse limb is drawn it approximates to an addition of these two limbs so somewhere around 7 plus 7 cm now once these markings have been done you will understand that this is the marking of the wise pattern now what about the marking of the pedicle so our pedicle on which the nipple areola complex is going to be based is the inferior pedicle so imagine in this case now one breast has been turned up this is the normal position of the hanging breast so for the pedicle we keep a base width of around 8 cm so this whole thing is going to be around 8 cm and it is going to extend to just beyond the nipple areola complex to enclose the entire nac on which the pedicle is carrying it so as i mentioned before that once both the limbs are drawn how do they meet they will meet each other at the level of the imf and this is going to be an addition of those two limbs now the point that i had explained in case of the wise pattern is that the final scar is in the form of a inverted t shape this t shaped junction is the one that creates problems of healing and there can be dehiscence or skin necrosis so in a lot of cases what is done nowadays is that at this lower transverse incision 
a small tongue shaped flap is also included in the center so that when this closure is done we have some extra amount of skin in the form of this tongue shaped flap here and it helps in better healing the inferior pedicle that we have outlined with a base width of 8 cm is what the nipple areola complex is going to rely upon so ultimately we will then mark the size of the nipple areola complex to around 4 to 4.5 cm which can be done with the help of a standard cookie cutter so these are going to be the standard markings for the Y's pattern and the inferior pedicle technique now how will we proceed step by step during surgery is what I will explain in the next video.